Hey everyone, Gilly here with this 1940s slash 50s pinup rockabilly hair and makeup tutorial. I've gotten so many requests for this over the years, so let's go ahead and get started with the makeup. First of all, we're going to start out with highlighter because highlight and very dewy, glowy looking skin is very important to a good pinup or rockabilly look. So I'm using this Girl Meets Pearl highlighter and I'm patting it into the tops of my cheeks and you can see that it gives me a really nice, healthy, natural, luminous looking glow. And then I'm using this cream eyeshadow on the inner corners and underneath my eyebrows. Now shimmer isn't exactly accurate to the 1940s and 50s, but it does provide a really great glowy, healthy skin look, which I think is very important. The next step is to contour. It's very important to any pinup look. And we're going to be taking this Hoola bronzer and I'm just taking it through the hollows of my cheeks and really building it up so that you get a more drastic contour than you would wear on a normal basis. And then we're going to move on to blush and we want a really rosy cheeked application. So for that, I'm taking dandelion blush and I'm just going to pat it over the apples of my cheeks and then slightly blend it back just so it doesn't look crazy. You don't want little circles on your cheeks but you do want it built up mostly towards the apples of your cheeks just to get that really rosy healthy glow. And now we're moving on to eyeshadow. I'm going to use the Most Glamorous Neutrals Ever palette and I'm mixing these top two colors because I want to create a color that's very close to my skin tone. So I'm just putting that over my lid and then I'm going to move on to my highlight color which is going to go in my tear duct and underneath my eyebrow where we already placed that shimmery eyeshadow base. Then once that's done, we're going to create a really great crease. The first thing that we're going to do to create that is to take this dark brown color and then take a very fluffy crease blending brush. And basically that is going to create a really diffused application. So it's going to look very light, much lighter than the color actually. And you get kind of a nice diffused airbrush look from it. Then you're going to take a more focused kind of pencil brush and focus that right at the base of the crease. You can see this application is much darker, so you get a really great gradient from this really dark application at the bottom, fading really nicely up to the highlight at the top, which is very important. Now we're moving on to winged eyeliner. Now this one can be tough, and I do have a tutorial if you want to check that out. First you're going to create a line that extends at the same angle as your lower eyelid. Then you're going to connect that back to the middle of your upper eyelid. And then basically just line in a very thin line around the rest of your eyelid just to create a kind of flow to the rest of the eyeliner. Once you like how the outline looks, just fill it in and you have your winged eyeliner. Again, I have another tutorial if that was really, really fast, because it was. And now we're moving on to eyebrows. To get a really great defined brow, I took the wax from Browsings and I took that under the bottom of my eyebrow to create a really nice edge. And then I moved to the powder to fill in everything else. That way it doesn't look like Sharpie eyebrows, but you still get a lot of definition. But if it still looks a little too drastic to you, you can always take a spoolie and kind of diffuse it a little bit so it doesn't look too drastic. Then the next thing that you want are definitely flirty eyelashes. So I used some bad gal mascara and some false eyelashes to create a really great flirty look. And finally, I'm gonna finish off with luscious lips. Now, if you're going to be wearing this to a party, I really recommend going ahead and staining your lips with Benetint first, or any lip stain that you like, to create a nice bit of color on your lips. That way, once your lipstick wears off, you still have some color there. Speaking of lipstick, I'm using this Hydra Color in Dare Me, and it's a beautiful, hydrating lipstick that creates that really nice, luscious look and hydrates your lips from the stain that we just used so that your lips look beautiful all night long. And that's it for the makeup. And now we're going to move on to hair. Now this is actually not as hard as it might seem. We're going to start out by sectioning and curling the hair for the victory rolls. So you're going to go ahead and part your hair on whatever side you prefer, but it does probably need to be a side part so this doesn't look silly. And then you're going to go ahead and part about three inches of hair from your hairline all the way down to your ear. And everything else from that back you want to go ahead and separate. Do the same thing on the other side and clip the hair that's in the back out of the way. Then we're going to curl the hair that's in the front. You want to curl it straight back away from your face. And once you've done curling it, you want to go ahead and put it back in its curled shape and pin it in place. And then if you have any especially wide areas, go ahead and split them in half just to make sure that you're not curling too much hair at once. And continue doing that until that entire section is curled. Then go ahead and repeat the exact same thing on the other side until your hair is curled and placed. Now we're going to go ahead and curl the remaining hair. To do this, we're starting in sections starting at the bottom. So you want to go ahead and section your hair leaving about two inches down at the bottom. Clip the rest up. Now you're going to curl the hair in little square sections going in one direction and I'm doing this toward the right and then clipping them back up once they've been curled. Once you've got that first layer curled, you're going to go ahead and drop another layer 
this exactly the same width, clip the rest of the hair up, and curl everything the exact same way again. The only thing that's really important here is that you're taking the exact same size sections and you're curling them in the exact same way. That way they all form together into great waves. But you can do this with rectangles if you want to so you don't have to do as many curls because that would take less time if you want to. And I do have another tutorial on that if you want to check it out. Once those curls are completely cool, you can go ahead and let them down and if you want to you can spray as you go to make sure that they stay really well like I did just there. And now we're going to move on to the scary stuff, which is to comb out the curls. I'm using a boar bristle brush to comb through my hair, and I used a 3 quarter inch iron before because my hair loses its curl pretty easily. So if your hair tends to be like that, go with a smaller iron. And you can see that doing this creates some frizz, some kind of undesirable frizz, which is actually very accurate to the 1940s, but not desirable in the 21st century. So here's what you can do to fix it. I took a little bit of shine spray from Sexy Hair, put it on my hand, wiped it between two hands, and ran it over my hair. And look what happened. The frizz went away. And the more you use, the more sleek and smooth it will look. But you can see there's a big difference between the two sides. So you can do this with a lot of different products and I'll probably make a video on it, but just in case you guys need it now, that's what you can do to help fight the frizz. Now let's move on to the victory rolls. Once those curls are completely cool, go ahead and let them down and then tease. The teasing is going to give you that nice shape to get that nice kind of roll shape you do need both the curl and the teasing to hold it in place. So once you've got it teased, go ahead and smooth over the top so it doesn't look frizzy from the front and then wrap your hair around two fingers and you're going to create a little donut shape which you can see right here. Now you're going to take that donut and roll it up like a sleeping bag until it's right against your head. You can see I'm doing that very nice and slowly and meticulously and then you let the back of that teasing just fall behind the little donut and it creates a victory roll. That's basically all it takes. And then I went ahead and after that was all in place the way I wanted it, stuck a bobby pin or two through the middle of it. And basically because you've got all that hair going on, you don't have to worry about how you pin it, just crisscross them to make sure that they hold really, really well. And then you're gonna repeat the same thing on the other side. Give it that teasing to give it the support it needs to stand up, smooth it so that it doesn't look frizzy, then you're going to create your donut by wrapping it around two fingers, just like so. And then you're just going to roll that donut up, up like a sleeping bag until it's right against your head and pin it in place. And that's it for the hairstyle. I hope you guys like this and if you try it out, definitely send me pictures. I love seeing them. And also make sure to check out my previous Halloween tutorials. I've been loving them and you guys have been loving them, so you should just check them out if you haven't. And that's it. I'll see you guys in my next video. Mwah. Bye!